Welcome to another video. We want to find the tens digit of 3 raised to power 2024. And because we're being asked to get the tens digit, we have to find the last two digits because then the first of those last two would be our answer. So whenever you're dealing with the last two digits of any big number, what they're telling you is if you can write this number out and you divide it by 100, whatever is your remainder would be the last two digits. So nobody expects you to write this out all the way because again, it takes a lot. It has about 966 digits if you write it out. So you expect it to just use some knowledge and we're going to use Euler's totient function for this one and then do some basic multiplication. Let's get into the video. What exactly is Euler's totient function? This is what it says. If two numbers, a and n, let's use n, are relatively prime, that is, they have no common factors, if the greatest common divisor of a and n is 1, then a raised to power phi of n is equal to 1 mod n. Now, if you don't know anything about number theory, I'm going to explain this briefly. I have another video that I had explained a lot of this, so I'm just going to explain the most important part, and then we're going to solve the problem. Um, check out this video when I solved it for another number. And the explanation there will give you all the necessary things about this strange stuff, but I'm going to use an example. So let's just say that we have two numbers, 3 and 5. So the GCD of 3 and 5 is 1 because they don't have a common factor other than 1. Now, what this is saying is, using Euler's totient function, if you raise a, which is 3 in this case, to the phi of 5, your answer is going to be 1 mod 5. Okay, so what does this mean? We have to know what phi of 5 is, and you know what mod 5. Mod 5 just means you divide the answer by 5, whatever the remainder is, is what you get here. So what is phi of 5? The phi of 5 is the set of all numbers, is the, num is the size of the set of numbers less than 5 that are relatively prime to 5. It looks like a long definition, but look, you have 1, 2, 3, 4. These are all the natural numbers that are less than 5. How many of them have, um, are relatively prime to 5? All of them. There's nothing that divides this and 5 or this that is not 1. So the common factor of any of these numbers with 5 is 1. So this, the number of numbers less than 5 that are relatively prime to 5 is 4. And that is what you call the phi of um, 5. So we can translate this as 3 to the 4th will have a remainder of 1 when you divide it by 5. And that's what we mean. It is 1 mod 5. Why is it true? Because this is 81. 81 divided by 5 will have a remainder of 1. So that justifies, or that's an example of totient, of Euler's totient function. So this is the totient of n, or what we call the phi of n. Okay, some people call it phi, but the correct pronunciation is phi. Okay, now, so we're going to use it. How is it relevant to the problem? We are looking for the tens digit, which means we are looking for the last two digits. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to divide this number by 100, because when you divide a big number by 100, the remainder is always two digits, right? So even if it is 101, when you divide 101 by 1, if you're looking for the last two digits, the last two digits will be 01. Okay, so in this case, we're going to be using the totient 
of one or the fee of the totient of 100, the fee of 100, which in this case would be, can we make a list? If you list out all numbers less than 100 from 1 to 99 and you try to pick out all the numbers that are relatively prime to 100, your answer is going to be 40 or 40, like I would say it. Okay, so it's going to be 4, 0. So we know that the fee of 100 is 40. So we know that the fee of 100 is 40. We can go back to this, okay? And since GCD of 3 and 100 is equal to 1, we can clearly say that 3 raised to the fee of 100 will be 1 mod 100. Okay, we know this now based on Euler's totient function or fee function. Now, what do we do? We just need to say 3 raised to power 40 will be equal to 1. Or congruent so what we're saying is that when you raise 3 to power 40 divided by 100 the last two digits will be 0 1 okay now but that's not what we want we don't want 40 we want 20 24 we just have to say how many 40s are we going to get in 2024 well we have to divide 2024 by 40 and we know that 2,000, 40 divides 2,000, but it doesn't divide 2,024. So we're going to have a remainder of 24. So we can say 3 to the 2024 can be written as 3 to the 2,000 times 3 to the 24. So we just need to find the last two digits. Remember that for any multiplication, the last two digit is determined by the last two digits of each of the factors. Okay? So it doesn't matter how many things you're multiplying or how big the number is. So even if this number was 2023 20, here, you just need to focus on the last two digits, which would be 23. If this was 2003, then 03 would be your focus. You'll forget about the rest of them because you're looking for the last two digits. Okay, so here we're going to say that this number is this way, so that 3, and we can actually rewrite this to be equal to 3 raised to power 40 times how many times 50 so we're gonna say raised to power 50 times 3 raised to power 24 okay and this is congruent to remember if you write write this now mod 100 this is gonna be 1 to the 50 times 3 to the 24 mod 100. Now this is just 1, so what we're left with is just this. If we can write, multiply 3 by itself 24 times, we're going to get our answer, the last two digits, okay? But this number is still to be big to work with, so what can we do with this one? So based on what we have, we know that 3 to the 2024 is congruent to 3 to the 24 mod 100. Remember, this is 1 to the 50, which is still 1. We know this is 1 from this, okay, mod 100. We're looking for the last two digits. This will have the same last two digits as this number, okay. So how can we do 3 raised to power 24 in a way that we don't need a calculator? Let's, let's multiply by, let's... Wait, if we square 81, what would it be? Well, you have to be willing to do stuff like that. 81 times 81. Let's do it here. 81 times 81 is going to be 5. Um, what is this? 6, 1. Okay, so now this is 61. But you know 81 squared is actually 3 raised to power 8. Do you see how far we've gone? So, we know that... 3 raised to power 24 is equal to 3 raised to power 4 raised to power 6, right? Yes. And this is equal to 
That's actually nice. This is how you work this out in the classroom, okay? You have to work it out that way. Just look for convenient numbers, okay? So this is 3 raised to power 4, um, raised to power 6. We know this is 81 raised to power 6, which is equal to 81 squared. If you square 81, 81 squared raised to power 3, and we're almost there. So, 81 squared, we did the calculation, it was 6561, I guess. So, this is congruent to 61 raised to power 3 mod 100. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you can just immediately get rid of the other digits and focus on the last two digits. That's why I have my mod 100 here. Okay, now we need to do this three times 61 times 61 times 61. I don't think that should be a lot of work for anyone. Okay, so let's do it. So let's do 61 times 61 times 61. So then this is congruent to 61 squared times 61. Okay, mod 100. So 21 times 61 is going to be 1,281 mod 100, which is 81. So we finally figured out that the last two digits of this number is going to be 81 and the tenth digit is 8. So we found the tenth digit, which is 8. We could have found, this is it actually, that's it, okay? I just did this in case you were looking for the last two digits, that's how you write it. So we say is 8, that's it. Never stop learning, those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.